Good morning, New Life Church. Pastor Chris here with an encouraging word. I want to start off with this statement. Jesus heals. One of the many names of God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals me. It's a personal statement, a personal statement to us in the name of God. And throughout scripture verse, it declares this. And today I want to do my best in proving that out through several scripture verses that the Lord has led me to. Because I believe as a believer, we've become content with sickness. We realize that God has done some things in our life, that his promises are true every single morning, that his mercies are new every morning. And we stand on certain promises throughout our life, but I feel like sickness has kind of been something that we've been, become content with because of Advil and Tylenol and other medications. We've, we've allowed ourselves to become okay with this in our life when instead of we, what we should do is go to the scriptures and say, God, show me what you want to do in my life. Show me the promises that you have for me, not just in other things, but in, in sickness as well, that we put sickness in there when we're praying to the Lord and asking him for healing. And so today, I just want to kind of read through some scripture verses that declare this in our life so that you can take them and declare them for your life. I'm declaring them right now in my personal life and in my family's life as a promise of God that he will do what he said he will do. And so I'm here today to give you those same scripture verses so that you can begin to stand on them and then search the scriptures for even greater scriptures that are there for your personal healing, for your personal benefit. So the first one I want to talk about is Psalms 103, 1 through 5. It says this, let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and he heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. What a great scripture to declare over our lives and to receive the promise of what the Lord is saying. He not only forgives us of our sins, but he heals us of all diseases, not just specific ones, not just the ones we talk about in the word. He heals all all of our diseases, all of our sicknesses can be healed through Jesus. Now, I love that the scripture talks about praising the Lord. See, it starts with praising the Lord. It starts with declaring that Jesus is Lord of our life. And then when we declare the praises of the Lord and exalt his holy name, we can see the promises of God fulfilled in our life. The next one is Psalms 30, one through three. It says this, I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help. How many of us have done that? I know I have. I've cried many times for the Lord for help in many different situations. And this is what he says, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Another great scripture that we can apply in our life and see that promise come to pass. God wants us to cry out to him. He wants us to declare who he is. He wants us to say, this is what I need, Lord. I'm at the end of me. I need you to step in in this situation. And what, did he, what does he say he will do? He will restore our health. If you're sick today, if there's something you're wrestling with today, God can restore your health. That is a promise. That is a truth, a fact in the word of God that we can take for, uh, for ourselves as believers. Now, this next scripture verse is two part. It's one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. It's the foundation of what I want to speak about to end this, this devotional today. It says this in Isaiah 53, three through six. This is before Christ ever came to the earth. It was a prophetic word by Isaiah before he ever came to the earth and before he died upon the cross. It says this, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and he looked the other way. 
He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. Didn't we hear that in Job? His friends came to him and was declaring that over Job that it was because of his own sins that he was going through this. This is the same thing they were saying about God. But he was pierced for our rebellion. This is a purposeful decision that happened when the Father sent his one and only Son. He was crushed for our sins. We know that, right? He was beaten so we could be made whole, whole, all of us. The completed work that God has planned for you can come to pass because he says it in his word that he wants to make you whole. Now listen, he also says this, he was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Now, first Peter, Peter declares this after Jesus has already died, already resurrected, already has gone to be at the right hand of the Father. He declares this. He says, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross that we could be healed, dead to sin, and live for what is right. And then he says this, by his wounds, you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. Guys, this is a declaration that we can say in our life. Sometimes, and I know for a lot of us as believers, we stop right there at the beginning part that Jesus sent his one and only son to die upon the cross so that we might be saved. And then we stop right there and we don't read the rest of the scripture. We don't realize all that God has done for us. What Jesus did on the cross wasn't just for our salvation. It wasn't just so that our sins could be forgiven, which is the most important part because we must come to Jesus first. We must declare our sins and ask for forgiveness before we can receive any of the promises of God. But so it's it's the first part. But the word also talks about Jesus being whipped, beaten, and wounded for our healing. He was punched, spit on, slapped, whipped for our healing, for our sicknesses, for our weaknesses and sorrows. Guys, Jesus came to die for our salvation, for our healing and for our restoration so that we could be delivered of any demonic oppression, anything depression-wise, anxiety-wise, any demonic attack. Jesus died upon the cross so that we could be saved and healed from that. He also saved us and healed us from sin. I told this to my children the other day. I asked them this simple question. I said, when we sin, who do we go to? And they said, well, Jesus to ask for forgiveness. And I said, when we fear a lot about what's gonna happen for today, or we fear about our future, or we we get anxious about all these things, where do we go and who do we go to? And they said, Jesus and the word of God. Why? Because he says, don't be anxious for anything in everything by prayer and supplication to the Lord. It also says, do not fear. We The word is very clear about our restoration in Christ and being delivered of anything the enemy tries to attack us with. So the enemy tries to come through sin, right? He comes and he lays the temptation down before us. And we have to make a decision to say, I'm going to have dominion over this the enemy and what he's trying to do in my thoughts, the lies, the sin, the, the, the lust, all these different things. And we have to have, take dominion and say, Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And we declare it over the times of temptation and the sin that enters in. And if we do sin, we go to Christ and we ask for forgiveness. And when he comes in with demonic oppression and begins to lie to us and drag us down and try to bring fear and anxiety into our life, who do we go to? We go to the Lord. We go to the word of God and we declare the truths that he has given to us so that we can be set free from that. And what what do we do with our sicknesses, guys? And I'm just asking that simple question. I'm not here to answer those questions for you. I'm here to give you clarity on what God is giving to me in truth about the love of God and what he did on the cross for us. 
I want to take not only the sin that I go through, not only the demonic oppression that may attack or the fear and anxiety that may come, but I want to take every sickness that I go through or my family goes through, and I want to take them before the Lord and say, God, you are a God who heals me. Your, your name is Jehovah Rapha. And because I'm able to declare that from a place of promise, from a place of knowing that I am a child of God, you are a child of God. And he declares healing over your body today in Jesus' name. And I'm asking you to go and take these scripture verses and find other scripture verses and begin to declare them over your life so that God can be set free in you and your faith can begin to rise. See, our faith is lifted when we trust in God. Well, how do we trust in God? Well, he's given us the word of God. The word of God is something physical that we can read, that we can see. And when we see it and read it out loud, our faith is increased because we trust in what he's saying. And his word says that he will heal you. So I'm declaring to you today that that is who Jesus is. The, our Lord, our Father is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. And today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. Today is the day of deliverance because that is what Jesus went to the cross for. He went for our healing, was beaten and broken so that we might be saved, healed, and delivered. I pray that this message is getting to you today. I pray that you're receiving what I'm saying to you today, that we're trying to get the understanding of the truth and foundation of what Jesus did. That's, that's what I'm bringing to you today. And from that foundation, we're able to make decisions based off of that and believe by faith that God is gonna do the work that he started. He's gonna complete the work that he started in Jesus' name. And there will be nothing in this life, no work of the enemy that can disrupt that in your life. Let me pray for you. Father, we come before you right now. I come before you, Lord Jesus, as a humble servant and declare these truths from the place of revelation that, Father, the enemy no longer has a foothold in my life or my family's life. And I'd also declare that each person listening to this message today will take that declaration and will bring it into their homes and into their lives and into their prayer closets and declare healing over their body, that as a believer, they're able to walk by faith and not by sight. They're able to not to walk in fear and anxiety. I rebuke you, enemy, in the name of Jesus, off of every single person listening to this message today, that you have no authority over their life, that sickness must bow at the feet of Jesus because Jesus paid for it all. He didn't pay for just a little bit of it. He paid for all of it. And he, I, he declares that our bodies will be made whole and that we will come to completion in Jesus' name. While we're here on this earth, yes, there's going to be a level of total completion when we enter into the heavenly places, but he says that we can be made whole also here on on earth. And so we declare that today. We take that promise in Jesus' name. I pray that you will move in their hearts today, Lord Jesus, that you will set them ablaze for the name of Jesus and that nothing in this life can stop them and that the enemy will no longer have a grip on them in sin, Lord God, in, in sickness, Lord God, or in demonic oppression through anxiety or fear or depression. Suicide's got to go in Jesus' name. I rebuke you, Satan, from believing that you have the authority to take authority over our bodies and our minds and our hearts because we are children of the Most High God. Father, I thank you for what you're doing today, what you're going to do from this day forward in many lives. We thank you. We praise you for your goodness and your mercy and the stripes that you bore for our healing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for listening today and I pray that God has blessed you above and beyond. And I'm looking forward, we're looking forward to seeing you at a Sunday service, this Sunday service, a Wednesday night service. Come and join us and be a part of New Life Church. Be a part of the fellowship of the body of believers where we can pray for one another. We can believe with one another that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Amen.